how is everybody hanging in there? I hope you're doing okay. I know that our last lecture had a lot of little steps in it. It wasn't particularly long, but it was really involved. So hopefully you got through that okay. If you're watching this video, I'm assuming you've made it to part three, so congratulations. What we're going to do now is talk about something called effects. You may already be familiar with these, but I'm happy to introduce them to you. Um, there are lots of different layer effects that you can add in Photoshop, and I think the easiest place to show you would be this Do Good logo. So I'm going to hop into the one that I already um, edited, so the vanishing point. And if you come down here, there's this effects button, and you can see that there are several different kinds. And the two that I'd like to talk about are bevel and emboss, and then down here at the bottom, I'm sorry it's cut off, is drop shadow. I'm gonna click on drop shadow, and just make sure that preview is on, and also make sure that you know drop shadow is selected, because depending on which one is selected, you can see a preview of what's going on. So I'm gonna move this up here right next to this, but let me turn preview on and off. So you can see here's no drop shadow, and here is a drop shadow, okay? Now remember, I've used drop shadow in the past, so mine are probably not at like the factory default settings. So let's go through at, um, how to adjust some stuff here. So I know that by default, blend mode is on multiply, which is good, and we do want a black shadow. So this sets the color of the shadow. If you're ever trying to do something outlandish, I don't know, here's a purple glow. Let's say that there's like LED behind there. But you can change the color of the light. Remember, we're trying to make this look like it's part of the building. And if you look at the windows here, these give you a clue as to what those shadows look like. So compared to my shadow, these are much darker. So let's talk about how to take care of that. Right underneath the blend mode, we have something called opacity. And the opacity is either how dark or how light something is. So you can see if I take it up to 100%, it's almost black, really similar to these. I don't wanna make it black, but I actually wanna go pretty dark, maybe 75% or 70%. So it's pretty dark, but I still get some stuff underneath. And the angle that I had by default is pretty good because it's showing it from underneath. Now, if you see that the shadow is going above, you need to change the, oh, excuse me, the angle of the light. So again, this isn't scientific or exact by any means, but you just need to kind of look at the image and try to find things um, to help you. Okay, so I'm going to keep my angle at about 130 degrees. That looks right to me right there. And you can also play with something called the distance. So you can see the distance is how far the shadow comes out. It's not that far off the building, so I actually want to keep it pretty close. The spread is like how soft it gets or how far it spreads out, and I'm going to keep that pretty close too, about 5%, because these are pretty hard shadows too. On, at that time of day. And then the size is basically how far it gets spread out too. So I'm going to keep the size pretty small as well because again these aren't soft shadows. These are very um, harsh shadows. So I want to follow what's going on here. Um, so that's it for the drop shadow. If I hit OK it applies the drop shadow to that layer there. Now I'm going to double click back on effects to go back in that menu and I can add more. So I can click on bevel and emboss and it'll add something else. You could also, if you wanted to, go back down to effects and grab bevel and emboss. It does the same thing. So again, I've worked on this um, before and so all of my um, properties are set to be a little bit different. So let me reset these to default and I think now my screen probably looks like your screen. What we're trying to do here is add thickness to the sign so it doesn't just look like a plane that's floating. And bevel and emboss can do that for us. So instead of an inner bevel, we actually wanna to go to an outer bevel so it goes to the outside. 
And can you see that it added it out here? So again, if I turn preview on and off, you can kind of see where it's going. What I want to do is I'm going to turn off global light because it's taking the light that we used in the shadow. And what I want to do is change that light. I'm just moving it around so that the bevel and emboss comes down over here. I'll get there eventually, I promise. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the size of it bigger so I can see a little bit better. Oh, and I need to turn preview on. Hello, Naima. That helps quite a bit. No wonder I couldn't see it. Okay, so that's about where I want it to be. But what I'd like to do now is under technique, right now it's smooth, but because I want it to be an edge, I'm going to go chisel hard. And that's not the size that I want. And keep working with this. So under the opacity, I'm jumping down. I want this to be a really hard light so I can really see what I'm doing. And shadow, I don't want a shadow there because I've already created one. So you can kind of see this weird outline right here. We're getting there slowly but surely. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I think I want that to go down. And I have to change my light source. There we go. Now we're kind of starting to get an edge that I like here. I'm going to make it much smaller. It's not that deep of a sign. And I think one thing that might also help is under highlight, I'm going to keep that normal. Before it was, I think, on multiply. And the color of it, if you click on the white, what we want to do is actually match it to the sign. But I want it to be darker, so I'm just going to pull down to the darker blues and then say OK almost there. Let me make it a little bit bigger. No, that's too big. I'm just, again, playing with this. See if I can get it to look right. Here's one other thing I'm going to do. Under the gloss contour, I'll kind of change the shape of it. There we go. So this is default, but if I kind of round it out, I think that ends up looking a little bit better. I think that gives us good depth right here. Okay, so in the end, here's my settings, and yours should be similar. I've got an outer bevel, chisel hard, at 100% depth, the direction is down, the size is 2. If you make it bigger, it just gets too thick, I think. So it's up to you to decide how thick you want it. Um, the angle I have at about 144 degrees. I change the gloss contour to this shape right here. Highlight mode, normal. I changed the color to a darker version of this blue. And before I get out of here, I'm going to go to the drop shadow and make it slightly bigger. So under the spread, I'm going to take it to about 20% and the size at about 6 pixels. I don't want the distance to go too far off. So here's my numbers for where I ended up. Again, you can play with it. Um, since it's not exact, you might get something close, but not quite exact. But that's where I ended up on bevel and emboss. You can pause to compare the numbers, and then here's drop shadow. So that's, again, how we can add some more depth. And here's what's cool. Down here on the layer menu, if I take this little eyeball for the effects, you can see it before and after. And you can even turn each one of them off individually. And you can kind of decide, you know, do you need the bevel embossed? Do you not be need the bevel and emboss? Um, and kind of work with it there. So the thing that's nice is once you get one of them, you don't have to restart the other one completely. What I can do is I can click on the effects and just like duplicating anything else. If I hit Alt and drag, I'm going to bring it down to the Kodo Paxi logo. I'm going to drop it in here. Can you see that it automatically applied everything here? Now, it's pretty close to what we want, but we want the bevel to be on the opposite side as well as the shadow. 
So let's go back into our effects menu by double clicking on it. And so for bevel and emboss, I'm going to take the angle and just kind of flip it over to the opposite side. And I'm going to go to drop shadow, and I'm also going to flip that over to the opposite side. Oh, but I need to turn off global light. My bad. Let me hit cancel. Sorry, because I had global light on, it changed this one. Let's do that one more time. So bevel and emboss. Use global light is off. Good. So I can switch it over here. So you can see this edge. And this one, I'm actually going to take out the blue and make it gray because this is a gray sign. So I'm just coming over to the grays. And since it's white, I'm going to come closer to the white. That looks good to me. And good, we've got normal. We've got our angle here. Everything looks good there. But let's go to our drop shadow. Now turn off, use global light. And let's look here. So with these shadows, you can see it's barely on the corner and the outside. So we want it to be about right here. We might play with like the spread and the distance a little bit too just so it matches these. This light is a little bit less harsh, I think. Okay, I'll call that good for now. And again, you can kind of see what it looks like with or without. It just adds a little bit more depth to it. We don't want it to be a poster, we want it to be a sign. And then the last thing would be art space. So just like before, call me lazy, call me efficient, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to click on the effects, right? It doesn't really highlight, but I know that it's on the effects. I'm going to hold the Alt key and drag it down to the Artspace logo. And this one looks crazy because I don't need the bevel and emboss, I don't think. Maybe I do. I just need to change the settings. But that's way too thick. So I'm going to go size one pixel. See what happens if I try to soften it. Well, it's okay. Maybe it's the angle that it's coming out at. Keep it where it is. I don't know, that one just doesn't look quite right to me. So I'm going to actually turn the bevel and emboss off on that one. But I'll fix the drop shadow. So let's see. Global light is off. And with this one, I think I'm going to bring it a little bit closer. That distance was too far off for these tiny letters. And I'm going to keep this spread at just about 8%. So it's really subtle. Size at 6. Looks okay to me. And again, this one's really subtle, but take a look. Before the drop shadow, after the drop shadow. So it just gives it a little bit of something. So that's what I'll be looking for on your exercise. And then I will go over what I'd like to see on the Salk Institute as well. Um, and your, uh, your other assignment will be explained in a separate video. But thanks for hanging through all three parts with me. I can't wait to see what you guys... Um, how you guys are able to apply these on this exercise as well as your other assignments. Thanks everyone!